Always a party at Patchworks. Let's get this party started. Woot woot. Hi everyone, this is Julie from Patchworks, and I am so excited that you're joining us for another Must Sew TV. Tonight, we are going to be talking all about our Moda University Club, which is a Patchworks exclusive. We are showing you all sorts of brand new fabrics. We have some great project inspiration, and then we have some show and tell from our customers to share with you. We have something super special today. We have some gifts that were brought to us from Stephanie from Fancy That Design House, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but so that you have a chance to win one of those awesome prizes, I just need you to comment and like this presentation, and then one of, actually four of you will be randomly chosen this coming Saturday morning to win one of those prizes. So let's get started and talk about the beautiful fabric that I have to share with you today. So we have been getting so much incredible fabric and we have different options for you. So if this is the first time you're tuning in, our membership for Moda University includes eight fabrics in either a fat eighth, fat quarter, half yard or yard size and you get to choose from the different options that we share with you. If you love something that we show you in any given month and you're not a member, don't worry. We, we can hook you up. We always have lots and lots of fabric. So the first one that I'm going to share with you, this is Songbook, which is from Fancy That Design House. And this is Stephanie's first fabric line with Moda Fabrics. She is an illustrator and we'll be talking a little bit more about her later. Our grunge theme fabric selection is curated to blend with the songbook line. See how beautifully these go together? Oh, it's just so delicious. Next, we have Cranberries and Cream, a classic fabric line from Three Sisters. This beautiful Botanicals by Janet Clare. And we have some behind the scenes wovens from Jen Kingwell. That is going to go along with the lollies that I have to show you. Let me share this with you. Jen Kingwell's brand new fabric line is low volume lollies, which come on the bolt like this, five inch strip, five inch stripes that are printed on the bolt. And what we did here is that we included four of them from the width of fabric. And let me just grab them for you here. So our board isn't going to quite stretch the width of fabric. So instead of eight fabrics, we're doing four. On each of them, you get eight unique prints. Okay. And let me line them up to share with you. So with four pieces of fabric that are width of fabric, you are actually receiving 32 different prints. There is a fifth bolt that we'll be sharing with you when we talk about the line in a little bit. And you can see that they're great neutrals going from lights to darks and everything in between. So that is a gorgeous fabric line. That is low volume lollies from Jen Kingwell. And the grunge has been flowing, so we have been able to catch up on our color builder options. So here we have the red and the orange, which we've shared with you already. And new this month, we have the pink and the teal. We also have 
the off or the white and the gray. So this is just a great way to be building your entire grunge collection bit by bit with eight fabrics a month. If you love more than one of these, because you know we have all of the fabric here, we of course would be more than happy to hook you up with more than one of the collections. If you are following along live, tonight I have Frank with me. He is monitoring the comments and he is going to be forwarding comments to me. If we miss something along the way, I'll be, I will be following up afterwards and answering all the comments as well as adding in links to our website and links to any patterns or different designers that I'm telling you about tonight. We're going to talk a little bit more about Songbook, which is that beautiful fabric line by Fancy That Design House. And I have here the yummy layer cakes and charm packs and jelly rolls. And let's take a peek at all of the different fabrics that make up this collection. So we have put together half yard and fat quarter towers. And we're going to look overhead to see these beautiful fabrics. And you can see here, if, if you watched last week, we might have shared the fabric with you last week because it had just arrived and I knew a lot of you were asking about it. It's a very on-trend color palette with very nice scale prints combinations of these blues and rusts, green. I think my favorite print, which is available in a few different colors, is this one right here. That is that gorgeous floral. Stephanie hopped over to the shop last week and it was so exciting to get to meet her. Stephanie is a local designer from the New Berlin area and it was just fun to be able to have her experience the full line of fabric in real life. So that is the fabric line there and we are going to pop over and look at the panels that come with the line. So we have a large scale panel. It is a 24 inch repeat that has six large motifs. And then there's a smaller scale that's exactly the same print. We carry the one that has the multi color pieces. We sell this by the row. And the project I'm going to show you is going to use one of those rows. You would have the full repeat here if you did the 24 inches, but we would sell you in between. A little bit more about Stephanie is Stephanie Slewinski is the artist and designer behind Fancy That Design House and Company just outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, New Berlin to be exact. Drawing inspiration from nature and vintage designs, Stephanie's illustrations are enjoyed by timeless old souls and the young at heart. Her degrees in art and graphic communication combined with years spent Honing her skills in the design industry have allowed her to create artwork that brings joy, hope, and encouragement to viewers and simply brighten the everyday. Follow her on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook at Fancy That Design House or FancyThatDesignHouse.com. So the other thing that we do carry is her beautiful lunchbox tin. if I can open it with one hand here. It's a super cute size, great for storing your hand sewing supplies or carrying a little snack here and there. And then Stephanie brought us some of her gorgeous tea towels. So the tea towels are available to purchase. We don't currently have them in stock. However, we would be able to special order them. 
They are uh, come four to a pack. We'll show them throughout the presentation here. And this is one of them. They're on a really nice linen. You can use them as a tea towel or you can incorporate them into a project. Make them into a bag or a tote. And make sure to like and comment so that you can be eligible to win one of these beautiful tea towels. Let's take a peek at the project we have made from her pack. So we put together a beautiful pattern, a beautiful project from this free and downloadable pattern available from the Moda website. I'll include a link to the pattern in the comments after the presentation. And if you're a Moda Club member, you will receive a color copy of this pattern in your membership materials that will be available tomorrow morning. The pattern specifically called for using mini charms and one of the small scale panel squares. Instead, we use our fat eighth pack because I always wanna make sure that you can take advantage of using that fat eighth pack. Now with that fat eighth pack, you did have a little bit left over. So let me show you first the project and then what you have left over. So look at this, isn't this gorgeous? It's super cute. You could hang it on the wall. You could have it be a, a centerpiece on your table, a little piece on your coffee table. And we just chose one of the panel squares for the center. If you get a strip, you'd be able to choose one of those beautiful squares. You will need, let's look overhead here, you will need 36 two and a half inch squares to make the centers and then you do use some squares to make these rectangles here. I have additional instructions that I will include in our packs here, how we cut them from the fat aids. So we cut two two and a half by nine inch strips that we sub cut into the rectangles that are used here. And then we cut two two and a half inch strips from the remaining fabrics that we then sub cut into squares. And you can see we have a lot of fabric from our fat eighth pack left over and we even piece together a back. We did go ahead and uh, purchased a quarter yard for our binding. If you wanted to have a matching binding and backing, go ahead and get a half yard so that it was, get a half yard so that you are all coordinated. However, you could put it together completely scrappy. Now, because you are getting a whole row what Karen's going to do is she's actually going to make a table runner out of this where she is going to repeat the rectangle. So this will just simply be a block of her table runner that she'll go here and here and here and here and so on. So that will be very interesting. I haven't done the math on it, but I'm certain that you would be able to frame actually all of your panel squares. So that is really exciting. You could either make a whole bunch of these or make one long runner or small wall quilt with that. For quilting, Heidi simply did some line stitching here. You can see how she ditched very simply and then she put a machine bound finish on it. So that is our so inspirational mini quilt that finishes 12 and 3 quarters by 15 and a half. Is there a full fat quarter stamp for that length? One of you have asked, is there a full fat quarter stack of this? And yes, there is. 
I'm not sure if we have a half yard tower remaining, but we definitely have a fat quarter tower. And let me know if you need that. Uh, the fat quarter tower, it has 30 fabrics because we did not include the panels in there and it is $97.50. Any other questions that you have, just make sure to type in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them along the way and otherwise I'll answer them after the presentation. Thank you so much for, for asking. Our next fabric line that we're going to talk about is Cranberries and Cream by Three Sisters. So Cranberries and Cream by Three Sisters is the winter holiday line for Three Sisters and it's full of these beautiful reds and creams. We're going to look at the 16 pieces that we received in store here. And let's take a peek at that overhead. They do such a pretty job tying them up and I'm just tearing them apart. So I don't see that this is truly a holiday line per se. There's no holly or anything on it. Just beautiful moda tonal reds and then that red and cream. What I really like about this, and I'm not sure that it translates particularly well across the screen, but you have darks and lights, a little bit of warm and cool. So all the reds are going with all the reds. And that helps make your fabric line look a little bit scrappier even though it is a planned collection that goes together. And it also then invites other reds and creams that you have maybe in your stash and how that can work together with your collection. I brought out a couple other bolts here so that you could see. So this is the holiday line from Three Sisters from last year and that is um, Marcia de Noel. And you can see how the beautiful red just works so beautifully with it. And then really how Three Sisters works with Three Sisters. So we have from a, a little bit more vintage, you have Rosewood and Rosewood is uh, similar to Chocolat or Double Chocolat which was one of my favorite lines. And then you have a spring line here. And so the blue is a little bit different, but still really the reds translate, blues translate. You can, and the more fabrics that you have, the more they can all play together. And that's one of the things that I really, really love about working within a particular uh, mode of designer is that a lot of times everything flows forwards and back and you can just play and have really beautiful scrappy quilts throughout different collections. I don't have a special project for you today with this particular fabric line. We have the half yard towers that are $104 for the 16 half yard. And then we also have the fat quarter tower, which would be 52. And we, since there's just 16, I did not make a fat stack of this. I just included all of them together so that you could have all of them to play with. I couldn't decide which four to kick out. Our next fabric line is Botanicals by Janet Clare. And let me just grab them up from across the way here. So Botanicals is a, a beautiful fabric line. Janet Clare is from England and she has a very unique illustrative style. A lot of times she makes things that are very realistic in nature. Uh, we've seen all sorts of beautiful line work types of designs. And this month we have a little bit more 
information in a Q&A about Janet. So let's get to know Janet a little bit better. So what is Janet Claire's favorite color? Blue. What's her favorite season of the year and why? She loves autumn for its fresh air, cool temperatures, and rich colors, and the chance to wear her hand knits again. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Definitely not a night owl. When you were a kid, what did you want to do when you grew up? She wanted to be a fashion designer or a ballerina. Well, she's a designer for sure. What inspires you daily? Words and nature. What is your favorite food? Impossible to answer, but a favorite food location combination that cannot be beaten is fish and chips at the seaside. Oh, that sounds delicious. Where was the best vacation? We had a wonderful holiday pre-children driving around the Champagne region of France. What is your favorite actor movie? I love a costume drama, Jane Austen or something like Guernsey Literacy and Potato Peel Pie Society. It's a lovely book too. Film is on Netflix. I have to look that one up. The Potato, the Guernsey Literacy and Potato Peel Pie Society. What are the words you live by? She believed she could, and so she did. Let's take a little bit closer look at botanicals. We have the full fabric collection in store. We have it on yards. We have towers. And when Janet said she's inspired by words, she incorporates text in a lot of her prints throughout her different collections. And I love this particular print. You have some gorgeous neutrals. This bird print is gorgeous. Some feathers, nice tonals. Really speaks to me seeing these birds. I've been doing a little bit of bird watching these days and so I've learned to appreciate the birds a little bit more than just just the sight of them being beautiful. So we have the full collection here. We have layer cakes, jelly rolls, and charm packs. This month for our Moda University, it is one of our super special months that this year uh, we have the opportunity to share with you some motivational video content that has been prepared directly from the Moda designers. So all of our club members, you are going to be getting the passport to the class. And then for any of you that are, will be looking at this and thinking that it's a great idea, I will be telling you how you can get your very own passport as well. So. We always like to have our own original content, but something, sometimes nothing can beat the content of the designers themselves and how they come up with their fabric and how they like and use them. And so I'm super excited that this month we are featuring a motivational project from Jen Kingwell. So I told you earlier that we were featuring her lollies, which I have kind of positioned here on this board. And so the lollies she was sharing in her video came to be because, so she's from Australia, and lollies is used instead of the word candy. And, you know, if you want a sweet in Australia, oftentimes you just say that you want to have a lolly. And so these are sweets. And she had come up to Moda and shared them, the idea, since she's a scrap quilter, about how she really wanted to have many more fabric prints available in her line, but as a lot of times designers are limited, as well as scrap quilters only want a little itty bitty bit, she thought that presenting fabric in these five inch chunks 
would be very versatile and very useful. And so let's just take a peek on the bolt for how this looks. And I think it is absolutely brilliant. These lollies have been around for a while. We have carried a few, we don't carry a ton of them. And I just really like how, listening to how she puts them together. So you can see in, de in between each of these prints, there's this stitch line. So you can either incorporate that into your design by maybe fussy cutting around it, or you can simply concentrate on the fabric that's in here. The other thing that's very, very unique about this and well thought out is that since there are only these lolly pieces in a line and there's not extra continuous yardage, you're still able to get a continuous border piece of one of these particular prints because of how it is printed. So that is super, super cool. So like, let's say you got two yards of this particular piece, you could have eight different fabrics that you were playing with, but then you could take and strip out one of the pieces so that you could have just a continuous non-scrappy border all the way around if you love the border look. We looked at the four that I showed there, one that I didn't include in our pack because we just have yard packs for the Fat Eighth members, is the Super Light. So the eight different prints that are in each of the prints is exactly the same and it just is how it's shaded. So it goes from the very, very light to the very, very dark. And if you follow Jen Kingwell and her work, you'll see that sometimes she uses the light background and sometimes she uses the dark background. Or you can just make a quilt that is the combination of them. Another thing that uh, she is known for is using templates. And so her motivational video is actually using her cloud club, ten, te cloud club template which we have right here. And actually, I'm going to grab the whole project, bring it over here so we can look at it, and then we'll go through what this is and what the video is all about. So I watched her video and learned so, so much as I was preparing for class for you. And this is the sample of what I made in the class to show you. So a tempter is her version of a template and the acrylic template can make one block. So you can make a one block quilt or she also has other patterns that you can incorporate these shapes into. Her templates are orange acrylic and are engineered beautifully. They have registration marks on it. They are designed to either be used for rotary cutting and machine piecing or hand drawing and hand stitching. They are all produced with a paper back on it. So if you didn't know this, all of your acrylic quilting tools are actually manufactured with this paper peel on it. Some of them have been removed before you get them at your door and others of them, you just get to remove them. If you've never seen these, all you need to do, and watch, I probably need to sharpen my fingernails here. Um, it's just a little tricky to get them started, but after you started, it just peels away. And I probably, you know, it's one of those things of, here we go, it started. Okay, they peel off really, really easily. The markings on here are etched, and so if you want to know the right side from the wrong side on these, you can simply use your fingernail, and the side with the groove is the right side. The side with the groove is the right side, and the side that smooth is the wrong side. Etched on here are the 
CC, which indicates which template it is. And so this is the Cloud Club, so it's CC. And there is an A, B, and a C template, and so this happens to be the C. So A, B, and C. This particular block, as it goes together, might seem a little complicated, but the one wonderful thing is that since they are larger pieces, especially the curve component of putting this all together, it's actually relatively simple because you have such a gentle curve with it being a larger piece. When you are working with templates, she talks about in great detail how to work with them. But one thing that I'm going to show you is if you're going to be working with them for rotary cutting, how you do that. So let's look overhead. And today I have, to help us out, I have a 28 millimeter, which is the smaller rotary cutter. I have a rotating mat. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And I also have a Soline ceramic lead pencil. When I was making the sample, I used the lollies here. And you can see that you are fussy cutting. But when you're fussy cutting, you also can have some extra fabric left over that you can do some other things with. I'm going to use this piece of background here. And I had, before I, my presentation here, I had actually starched all of my fabrics. For each of the blocks, you are going to have one A, which is your center, a right and a, 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 right and a reverse, of your B and a right and a reverse of your C. You can simply work with your fabrics, wrong sides or right sides together, so that you can cut two at a time and then be ready to go. So if I took, let's say, my C here and laid this on top, I can have my right and my, or my my right and my reversed cut at the same time. One thing she talks about in her video is the bias and how she, since she hand pieces most of her things, how she works with that. So if you are not familiar, you have your length of fabric, your width of fabric, and then you have your bias. So, if we look at the block here, parts like this, you'd want on the curve, you absolutely want bias and straight, preferably here. However, as long as you're aware how everything is going to stretch and you use a little bit of caution along the way, you can use the fabric however you prefer. However, let's take a peek here. So here, you can see that you would want straight here, okay? So that there's less stretch along the way, if possible. So I have kind of lined up here, okay? If you had wanted to, you can prepare the backs of your templates with InvisiGrip or a different type of grip to hold everything in place. These particular templates are a little bit larger, so they actually don't um, skid like some smaller pieces would. And so when you're cutting them, like if you were tracing them and cutting them with a scissor, you would simply trace and cut. Here, I am going to cut, and I love how she's engineered these corners 
so that you don't have to trim off any excess after you've put your blocks together. They really just, she's done a great job with how they go together. And then there's a little bit of, of curve here. So especially with these curved templates, using a smaller rotary cutter like this 28 is wonderful because you won't nick your template. I probably could have changed my blade out for us. I just uh, grabbed it from the drawer here before we did our presentation tonight. Okay, so here is the shape. Now, if we look ever so closely, you might be able to see here that we have a little bit of a gray from that separator line of the lolly, and that's okay, it's gonna end up in our seam allowance. I'm going to mark our points on the back here, our registration marks, and I'll show you when, how to line up these registration marks. I'm gonna just put them here, and these are great for showing you how to pin the blocks together. And you might not be able to see them with what I'm doing here. A soft mechanic, a soft lead mechanical pencil or these great ceramic lead pencils work beautifully. You want to avoid using um, a sharpened lead pencil because they can end up getting too wide of a line. And uh, a felt tip marker may not come out. So that's why Jen prefers the mechanical pencils. So let's take a peek here at the different pieces that we have. So this is one block altogether. We should show you how it comes together here. Has anyone used any templates for piecing anything along the way? Okay. I thought I had a couple more parts. I'm not sure exactly where they are, so we'll just look at what we have right here. So this piece, our A piece, we marked four places. And marking in this center spot right here is super important because it's going to help us line up when we stitch our curve together. So we'll be lining up this point with the V of this. So that's where it's really important, to spending that little bit extra time to mark. And then when we are lining up the pieces, let me hold this up here. So we pinned here and here and here and stitched and opened up. I pressed to the dark side. Now after you cut these pieces, one thing that is a really good idea is for laying things out to see where you might want things to end up. And when I pieced them, I pieced both sides of the B and then both sides of the C. Why don't we go ahead and I'm going to pin a C on here just so that you can see how I did it. So first up, you can see how everything is notched beautifully based on how she has engineered her templates to work together. And then what I do, you might not be able to see that yellow dot, but we're gonna pin through the dots there. I'm gonna pin on the other side here. Now, if you are hand stitching these, you may wanna start, if you've never hand pieced, 
you absolutely can go ahead and do um, draw a line from dot to dot so that you know where to go. She spends quite a bit of time talking about how to get started hand piecing if you've never tried. And, you know, I should have watched her video on it before I uh, taught a group of young students earlier this year. So, uh, really great tips on how to do that. So, simply sew and then flip. When you are working on after your units are complete and you're going to piece them together, she recommends that you have the you have your curve on top here as I worked with it. I had this part on top. And you're going to put together rows at a time. Stitch from dot to dot or the whole length? You stitch, uh, the question is, do you stitch from dot to dot or the whole length? So if you are hand sewing, you would stitch from dot to dot. Machine piecing, we are stitching the whole length. So it is a depends question. And the reason why when you are, it's because of how you not start and stop a seam when you're hand sewing. When we machine piece, we typically don't tack on either end because it adds too much bulk. However, when you're hand piecing, you do not every seam. And she shows you about how she starts from dot to dot. Any other questions? Is there a picture of the finished project? The picture of the finished project, thank you so much for asking that. We have, so this is an insp this is a uh, diagram for the repeat block quilt that comes in the template. She gives you instructions for how to put these together and then in her different single block templates she also has separate patterns that use these as components in different quilts but you can make a complete project with simply this single block tempter as she calls them and this one is called cloud Colub. And each of the template, or this particular template set, is $20. And the finished block measures 12 by 5. For this particular piece that I made here, I had started with a half yard of the background of the lollies and then used my fat eighth pack of the lollies for the darker pieces. So I could have gone a little bit bigger. However, I would not have gotten a giant project. In her picture here, as well as in her video, she references not only her low volume lollies, but she also references her low volume wovens. One of our Fat Eighth Pack options had been her behind the scenes wovens, which would be great to incorporate into this project. However, um, there's also some of these wovens that we have in the fat quarter bundles available for you as little tasters for working with them. And the fat quarter bundles are perfect because especially in a project like this, you are not using large pieces. You just want little bits of lots. So we have some dobbies, we have some, print, uh, some ginghams in there, some printed tickings. This soft and silky is very similar to the behind the scenes wovens that we have in the pack, these soft silkies here. It's a lighter weight than a toweling. And you can see here, this one is an icot 
all sorts of different scales. And this particular block was just a lot of fun to make. It's something very different from what I normally do. And I had a very enjoyable time just sitting down and working on a new skill. So if you are not a club member and you are interested in getting access to the video, all you need to do is order a Cloud Club template set from us and we would be more than happy to hook you up with the video access to that motivational video. And we do have a limited number in stock. We're more than able to get and we'll be getting a lot more. So just let us know if we run out and we need to order one for you. This is available on our website right now. And as I said, I will be including links to all of this after the video. All right, so now I have been doing a lot of talking and I wanna share with you some of the wonderful show and tell that you have been working on. I am just going to hop over to be able to see the screen so that I can share with you the different projects that we have to share. So the first project that I wanna share with you is an insulated lunchbox tote that we had featured in the club a few months ago. And Anne, thank you so much for sharing that with us. It is beautiful. Kathy shared with us this beautiful yellow and green and blue. This is gorgeous. I have that fabric line off the tip of my tongue right now. But that is gorgeous. Thanks for sharing with us. And I love how you have it staged in the outdoors. It's gorgeous. Deborah was inspired by a project from a few months ago. And I love how you have put that Wisconsin panel to good use. It is gorgeous. And you made it bigger by putting an outside panel. Kathy used her Violet Hill to make a gorgeous table runner, but she's using the table runner on the back of her couch, and she loves it so much, she is going to be making a different couch runner for every season. So thank you for sharing that great idea on how you can use table runners in different ways. Jerry used one of her vintage charm packs to make this gorgeous half square triangle quilt. Thanks so much for sharing that with us, Jerry. Barbara was with a local guild and I believe a lot of you made, painted a beautiful barn quilt. So if you have a barn quilt square that you would like to share with us, please make sure to do that in our Patchwork Party Facebook group. Thank you, Barbara, for sharing. Lisa was super busy on a quilt retreat, and this is just one of the gorgeous projects that she finished. Whew, good job, Lisa. Kayla just love, love, loves her June Taylor Quilt As You Go bags, and great job on this one. I believe, Kayla, you said this one you were keeping for yourself, so great job. Beth? took her version of a project that we did earlier in the year and she finished this up and gave it to her mom. Thanks for sharing with us, Beth. Nancy made one of my very favorite 12 pack quilts. Thanks for sharing, Nancy. That is gorgeous. That is one of the, that's a Zen Chic fabric line. And Sharon made this gorgeous Primitive Gatherings flag quilt that we shared earlier in the year. Great job. Mary has been busy and this super cute quilt 
went together beautifully and it's bright and cheery. And Marilyn brought this one in. We got to see it in the front of our store. So thank you so much, Marilyn, for sharing that with us. I didn't have the opportunity to share with you a little bit earlier the picture of Stephanie when she came to visit me in the shop. And so here is a picture of Stephanie from Fancy That Designs. And thank you so much for coming in. I can't wait to do some amazing things with you along the way. You can see there the tea towels that we have. And so if you want the opportunity to win one of those tea towels, make sure to comment and like the video. So we have just a couple more things that I wanna share with you before I let you go tonight. And that is, we have some really amazing fabric that's going to be coming. One of the fabric lines that's going to be coming is Yuletide Gatherings Flannel. Look at how thick this layer cake is because this flannel is just so yummy. So this fa fabric line is going to be featuring another motivational video series. So it's really exciting that we are being able to share with you all of this great designer content. We had uh, the Debbie Maddie video last month. We're having Jen Kingwell's video this month. And then this Lisa Bonjean video is either going to be September or October. I'm not quite sure which one it's going to be, but it is really great. So the gorgeous reds and greens, creams and grays, beautiful on its own. I can't wait to see what we're gonna be making in the project that's featured on the video. And then this also goes really, really well with some other very on-trend flannel that is in the store as well right now. We are also gonna take a peek at uh, another panel I have behind the panel. Let's see if I can do this without tearing everything down. So we have, I think we might have looked at this a little bit earlier in the year before we were ready for it. And this is some Ruby Star Christmas. Look at this, isn't this great? So this is Peppermint Please. And there's the large scale panel. And then we have a printed fat quarter panel panel. And the printed fat quarter panel panel, did I say that right, fat quarter panel panel? That one is, has four different prints on it as printed yardage here. And then you do have a spacer in between. So you can either use it as one a uh, convenience panel with the four different prints or cut them up and use them separately. And then I love how these different large scale pieces go together. You could make really cute uh, gift bags with them. And then we also have the Sarah Watts Crafted Moon holiday cards that coordinate with this fabric line. So how cool is that, this happy holidays we have in a card so you could give, make a gift bag with this and have the coordinating gift card be this beautiful card. So we have those in store as well. Lots of amazing, beautiful fabrics coming in every day. We're making lots of room for it. We still are continuing our clearance event in store and online so that you can help us make room for all of the amazing fabric. It is time to do a drawing for our show and tell winner. So I'm going to hop around and do that. So for our show and tell, we have two amazing prizes today. We have a Even So It Is Well With My Soul sticker 
And then we also have a songbook mini charm pack. So think lucky. And the winner of the mini charm pack is Jerry Driggett. Congratulations. And the winner of the sticker is Kayla. Congratulations. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I really appreciate you watching. Join us every Thursday night for Must Sew TV at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you haven't already, join our Facebook party group, our patchwork party, to be able to share, show, and tell. We pick out show and tell to share every week uh, that coordinate with our different clubs that we share. Also, we can share ideas with each other. I hope you are having a great August. I hope you are sewing lots. Happy quilting, and we'll see you soon.